It's Flavel, he'll take it. Blocked by a very efficient wall. Swept across to Callaghan. Callaghan again. And Willie Jumison gives him the lead. It's his first touch of the match. And jubilation all round Easter Road. Matthew Ald is out the track. Look at the joy. And you can't play him at all. Well, it was Callaghan who made the run. The blind side of that United defence for the high ball. He got a header to it. Billy did very well the first time. Callaghan tied again. United scrambled it off the line. And there was Jimison who scored a goal, which I'm sure he'll remember for a very long time. Look at now to Michael Roy. Alderson going in the overlap. Good play by Alderson. That's a fine cross. And a superb goal by Frank Stapleton. Well, that was Vintage United. Great play on the left. It was Alveston who made that great overlapping run to take the pass from Michael Roy. Went to the dead ball line at great speed. The cross right now, and that breaks the day up. With the worst left in the hotel, and it's just one room. And, you know, after a while, you begin to wonder what's happening. Like, you, she starts getting niggly when you come back and say, well, look, I've been stuck in here all day. And maybe you're a bit tired after training. You want to relax for a while. And like, you've got to make the effort. And uh, it's nice to get settled into a house, I think, as quickly as possible. I suppose, Chris, it, it must have been a smashing help for you, the fact that you are actually from this area anyway. Oh, yes, definitely. My parents live here and all my friends I've grown up with, so it was great coming back. You look around, you see what is the best, and Frank State, not only what is the best, what is the best that is available. And Frank, um, you know, he's a, for my money. Aiming for Koppel. Touch for Thomas. Looks useful. That's the goal from Makari, 1-1. Got a great awareness in the box. Oh, yes! For the time I was at Arsenal, like, it was like nine years, and you get used to us, to the way of playing there. And uh, Manchester United is, is a little bit different. Uh, probably more attack-minded. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, I, I haven't had any real problems settling into the team where, and I think that's mainly due to the players that are here. All of us in the team get on well together. Some clubs you get a bit of jealousies and that, but I think here, you know, everybody's professional enough to know that what the job is. Everybody wants to win the title. And as Frank looks to the future, I wondered if he still had thoughts of following the likes of Liam Brady and Joe Jordan by going to play abroad. I don't think it will happen. Um, the chance was either this year or it wasn't at all because I signed a long-term contract here. Uh, and obviously, the club, there's nobody really going to want me at the age of 30. Um, it was, you know, a temptation, but I didn't really get the firm enough offer from a top club in the, on the continent. And I'm happy enough here. It's Stapleton to chase. And he got there, and he scored! Prior to the... The enforced break we've just had through the weather, I felt we we're probably the, just about to become the hottest team in the country. Um, you know, because of the break, we, we did in fact drop a little bit, but there were signs at Stoke on last Saturday that uh, we were getting some of the fluency back. And you're happy with the part that Frank is playing? Oh, more than happy. He's 11 goals. And, and Wall through the legs of Morgan to Taylor. Tamley. Best got away by cross, but only to Charlton. And in it comes again for Lord to jump. It's the first to him. Can you sustain it, do you think, this season and possibly win the league? Because I think we've got an awful lot of good quality players at the club, um, players that have now settled down together. And we had a very good run late at the end of last season. We've started off uh, this season well, c including our pre season results. And, uh, I think that we are ready to make a very, very big challenge for the championship. Well, this looks a quality match on paper this weekend, West Bromwich Albion against Manchester United. Is it, a, is it a little bit special for you? Well, over the last few years, United Albion matches have always been a bit special. Um, this one's got a little bit of added spice uh, in view of the fact, like myself and Brian Robson left the club somewhat under a cloud, according to people. 
Um, but I think we settled that score a little bit last year, you know. Um, in the corresponding game last season, uh, Manchester United came to the Hawthorns and had their first victory, I think, since 1966. And I'm just hoping we can repeat that this afternoon. You haven't settled the bill for Robson yet, though, have you? <laughs> no, but our payments are well on schedule, Gary. You know us. We don't welch. <laughs> what about the Cyril Regis? I mean, he looks as if he's coming back into the side today for Albion. Yeah, I think Ron Wiley must be a bit of a dilemma for him. He scored for his three front players have scored goals in the uh, five nothing win they had over Brighton. Um, the big guy, I would think, has always got to be in the side. You know, I, I, it's a dilemma, but he'll pick him. I'm expecting the big fella to play against us. You've got Norman Whiteside now back from the World Cup. Um, how established is he in, now in your side, and what are his qualities for you? Well, he's a 17-year-old, this is the saying we've got about him, he's a 17-year-old, about 30 years of age in maturity, strong. You saw in the World Cup, he's not without skill. Um, what hasn't been shown yet, he can be a little bit spiteful as well. And I say that in the kindest sense of a word. He's, uh, he's a competitor. You know, I think there's one or two central defenders that have perhaps had it all their own way over the last few years. I might find that uh, this lad's going to put some stick about. He's a strong boy that can play. Um, against Nottingham Forest in midweek, he was arguably our best player in a very, very good team performance. You, you've rebuilt this Manchester United side to, you, to your uh, requirements. Have you still got a lot of spending to do? Still a lot more players to bring in? You never know. I said when I went there, you know, I said I believe that Manchester United should always have the best if possible. And if, if better than what we've got become available and we've got the wherewithal to do it, then we'll make every effort to bring them to the club. But uh, in terms of what we've got at the moment, yes, I'm well satisfied. Life's a bit diff different for you than it was at Albion. I mean, I know you enjoyed it at Albion, but it's a bit of style up there, isn't it? Well, I think you enjoy yourself wherever you are. I mean, I enjoyed it when I was manager of Kettering Town. I enjoyed it, as you say, at Cambridge and at uh, West Bromwich Albion. Certainly, I'm loving it there in Manchester. Well, actually, uh, Ian St. John, as we hand back to you, I think there's a message from Ron, because he, he wanted to make sure that we joined you on on the ball in a bit of style here, didn't you, Ron? Well, you know the Saints. He reckons every time I was, he saw me in Spain doing things for the World Cup, I was by a pool and... Uh, Done it again, kid. I found one in Birmingham now. Yeah, but with so much awareness of the game. Quite an accolade there for a young lad whose first experience of European competition on Wednesday left him hobbling. He was restricted to just one shot on target by a Valencia defence which was uncompromising and provocative. So much so that for one silly moment, the 17-year-old lost his head completely and ended up with a booking he deserved. Hopefully, Norman would have learned another lesson in a career which, it is easily forgotten, only took off in April. Matt Busby used to throw them in young when they were known as the Busby Babes. And here he is, not 17 until the 7th of May. An Irish lad coming on for his first taste of league football. Two months later, the name Whiteside entered World Cup records when the Northern Ireland International took over from Pele the distinction of being the youngest player ever to take part in the finals. Whiteside. He's so powerful, is that? What a good run! Oh, he was denied what would have been a super goal. If there are dangers in such a meteoric rise to the top, they don't yet seem to have affected the 17-year-old. Against Ipswich last Saturday, Whiteside showed scant respect for two England internationals, Russell Osman and Terry Butcher, as he set up a chance for Frank Stapleton. But it was his own shooting ability which caught the eye, starting with a second-minute goal of which Jimmy Greaves, Dennis Law, or the watching former United hero George Best would have been justifiably proud. A half-chance which only remarkable speed of thought and action could convert. Call it youthful naivety or instinctive genius, Whiteside certainly seems to have a special confidence and awareness in the penalty area. As for his second goal, well, it would be easy to liken it to one or two by George Best at his peak, but that would be taking away from a youngster who fully deserved the adulation paid to him at the final whistle by the fans. And it was appropriate that as the Stretford end hailed a new hero, an old one was sitting in the stand, no doubt forming his own impression of Norman Whiteside while perhaps also reliving some of the glorious moments he provided at Old Trafford. Driven wide. Yes! When I first saw him, I thought the one thing that he needed was sharpening up. But the more I see him, he's, he's obviously working on it. And he, he looks very sharp as well. For a big, strong lad, tremendous. 
course, he had the pleasure of playing in a World Cup for Northern Ireland, which mm -hmm. was something in your glittering career you never quite managed. Yeah, you know, the lad seems to things like everything's going right for him, and every time I come here, he scores, so I'll have to maybe get a regular season ticket or something here. But uh, as I say, for a, a young lad, tremendous prospect. You know, I, I agree with everyone. You know, I'd heard about him before, and the more, the more I see him, the more I like him. Well, Norman White. Four hours after England's international with West Germany, and Gary Bailey, reserve goalkeeper on the night, is back at work. Four months after becoming a Bachelor of Science in Physics, he's just embarked on a three-year part-time course leading to a master's degree. The mysteries of the computer world take up much of the time Gary Bailey spends here. Of course, he was a familiar face to many of his fellow students and tutors even before joining their course. Gary, how important is your academic work to you? Well, it's of very great importance to me. Uh, it was more so in the past, because now, obviously, I'm, I've been established in the United First Team for four years now, and uh, my future's a bit more secure. But in the early days, things could have gone either way, and, and this still applies to most young footballers today. And at the time, um, my family were very keen for me to continue with my studies. And I'm pleased I have, because, um, A, it gave me the option, if things didn't work out well, that I could, I could go on and, and have a career. And even now, the time will come when I'm finished with football. And I certainly don't want to be sort of scrounging for jobs or asking for friends for help in that. I would like to go out and forge a new career and a good career, and I'm hoping that this education will help me that way. In more familiar surroundings, Gary Bailey has now been a Manchester United first team regular for almost four years. For the last two of those years, no other first division club has conceded fewer goals, evidence in itself of Bailey's hard work and success. Tempest is in. He's got past Bucken, has he? He has, and Gary Bailey makes his first save of the night, and how important it was. Today, the outward signs of success in Gary Bailey's life are obvious. It's easy to forget he only got his chance at Manchester United after Jim Blythe, then of Coventry, failed a medical when Dave Sexton wanted to bring him to Old Trafford. Blythe's disappointment was Bailey's big break. I think football's like that. You get chances out the blue, you get a chance, and it's up to you to take it. And uh, it was a very hectic first couple of months ending in the cup final. There's a minute left on the clock. Brady for Arsenal. Right across, Sunderland! It's there! It's 3 2. There are still those, aren't there, in Manchester who say, oh, the young goalkeeper cost us yeah. the cup final. How did you view? that moment right at the end? Well, I think, I think firstly, besides that moment, I think you have to get to the cup final. And, I um, mean, you, you've got to play fairly well to get there. Um, it was a pity in a way that, <clears throat> having got there, things didn't work out well. Um, I never had much chance with the first two goals, but having pulled ourselves back in, the third one was very dubious. But having said that, from my own personal point of view, I think it might have been a good thing, because it brought me down to earth with a bump. I mean, from the, I just got straight in the first team and then to the cup final. and. If, I, if I'd have won that, I might have floated off somewhere. But as it was, I came down to earth with a bump, and then I realised, you know, what, what the game was all about. But that cup final is only one of dozens of games that Gary Bailey has recorded for his personal video collection. The university student is also a considerable student of football. Gary, what's the value to you of having this very large collection of videos? Well, it's, um, it was a great value when I first got in the team, and that I used to watch every game that we played that was on television. Um, see if I could learn from my own mistakes and just, just look at the situation. Um, today now I, I tend to glance through them a bit more quickly. There's certain points I look for. It'll often happen in a game that I'll be happy with most of the game and there might be one point, two points I'm not 100% sure about. So I'll watch it on telly and make up my mind. If Gary Bailey does eventually become England's number one goalkeeper, it's difficult to believe any of his often illustrious predecessors will have worked harder getting there none most certainly will have had a better and a more advanced education. What no one knows, though, is how long Gary Bailey must wait, and will he make it? Play that game, but surely some of the moderns must have flourished in the age of entertainers. <laughs> well, to me, it was only Of course, they were never destined to play together, but they met at Old Trafford for the Manchester Derby. In a crowd of 57,000, the injured Francis sat in the stand and chatted across the generations to the old man with the jet black hair. An anonymous man, but one who used to be one of the great Saturday afternoon heroes.
You can only win much as the scoring goes, can't yeah. you? I mean, it's no good going out there and saying, all right, well, we've got a point, we'll keep it. You'll win nothing with us, will you? I mean, the three-point system makes a big difference now. It does, yes. I still feel though, that uh, even though you have these three points, uh, if you get a point away from home, it's still a good result. A good point. But, yeah, it uh, it's important not to drop any points at all. Right, it is. That ball went from there. Yeah. One bike there, and they were still in the same position, weren't they? Yeah. That's oh, oh, the line again. Yeah. So lucky he doesn't play for Brian Clough and misses a chance like that. Oh, <laughs> really yeah, don't bother. It's according to uh, Brian, he never missed a chance. <laughs> Finish some pressure on now. Oh, Tom. There we go. I think you would have yourself there, Oh, you? I think that's a lot of even money, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Even money. Pretty boldly in the press, and uh, that's gone home to our players. They they remember that. I think in fairness to David, he's probably tried to defuse it a little bit since, hasn't he? And so that he was quoted out of context. Yeah, make no mistake, we haven't tried to defuse it. We've reminded the players that were said. You've been reminding the players this week, have you? Very much so. Um, particularly Frank Stapleton. He's been made well aware that uh, apparently he didn't turn up that day. In fact, in fairness to Manchester United as well, you didn't have two of your main stars out in that league match, did you? Arnold Muren and Steve Coppel didn't play either. No, um, Steve is very, very important to us. Well, they both are. They're both great players. Um, Steve is very important to us because he gives us that width and pace. Um, the one thing about that particular day was Ashley Grimes, who was the stand-in for Arnold, was probably our best player. Scored a magnificent goal and had a tremendous game. But Arnold's playing well at the moment, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with, with these two players playing. Can you tell us what Ron Atkinson's going to say to Manchester United just before the kickoff? Well, I say keep, uh, keep, keep play the way you have been playing. We've been playing very well at the moment, um, and it might just be at quarter to three. It's a disaster which so stunned the nation. The plane carrying the best team in the land back from a European Cup tie in Belgrade crashed on takeoff after refueling in snowbound Munich. Of the 44 passengers, 23 were to lose their lives, including eight United players. The loss of so many of Busby's babes was a terrific blow to the football world. Among the eight who died were potentially some of Britain's greatest ever footballers. Goalkeeper Harry Gregg survived. Today, he's coach at Swansea, but he's remembered for his bravery when he rescued a mother and her baby daughter, who this week traveled to Wales to meet him for the first time since the crash. Vesna Lukic is now 26, a striking young lady despite 10 operations. Greg was very brave. Instead of running away, he came back and pulled me and my mother out of the wreckage. You had been traveling in your mother's arms? Yes, actually, I was sitting in her lap. Yes, and you had no seat belt? No, my mother had the seat belt and I hadn't. And the fact that I didn't have the seat on actually saved my life. Yes. Uh, at the time of the catastrophe, my mother was three months pregnant with my brother. And now he is a handsome boy of 24. He's starting to become a journalist and he's doing his national service in the army at the moment. After Munich, I understand some of the Manchester United players came to visit you yes. in the hospital and you have a special souvenir at home. Yes, Mr. Charlton came to see me and he gave me a little teddy bear. Well, the little teddy bear is still alive, although it is very shabby. <laughs> So what are your thoughts now about Harry Gregg? Well, I think that he's superhuman and that he's a very special person. Well, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Mr. Gregg. And now we're a few minutes away from you at last meeting him. Okay. Can you put into words how you feel at this moment? Well, not exactly. I'm more than excited now and I'm very nervous, although I'm very happy that I'm going to meet him in a few moments. The reunion took place at the home of Harry's Swansea colleague, Phil Bosma, and Vesna, in a delightful touch, sported a shamrock, the emblem of Harry's native island. It was with some trepidation that Harry approached the rendezvous with me just minutes later, and 25 years waiting was over. 
so happy to meet you after so many years. <laughs> I'm going to kiss you. I don't know what to say. <laughs> This part I don't like, but... <laughs> Can I sit down? Can, I... Can we sit down? <laughs> I don't know who speaks English here. I don't. I do. <laughs> That's good. Better than I do. It's not the perfect English, but it's something, you know? I've been living here for 30 years and I still need a translator. Yeah, I know that you come from Ireland and aye, aye. your dialect is different from the dialect of the British people. Yeah, they say we swear more, I don't know. <laughs> I am really and truly, I'm, I'm very proud. I know I'm very proud and I'm very delighted that I have met the both of them. Hi, can you tell us what you remember? I know it's a long time ago now, 25 years. I, I heard a child cry and the pilot shouting, it's going to blow. And uh, I don't know, I uh, shouted, there's people alive in here. I went back and I remember the baby coming on the aircraft. I actually remember the baby coming on the aircraft. And they weren't sitting far from me at the front of the aircraft. And she was wearing, in, in those days, what was called a bunny suit or something. White, I, I can remember that plainly. And when I crawled inside, uh, I was almost afraid.